This is TOS TV, your digital first Pan-African news network. I am Mesafel Ajinomo, and this is TOS National News. 55 people have been fined for not wearing masks in Abuja on Monday. They were charged to the Abuja Mobile Court on Monday. The violators were tried and convicted by the magistrate, Ebiwari Eremasi, after they pleaded guilty to the charges. The head media publicity and enlightenment of the FCT COVID-19 Regulations Enforcement Task Force, Ikaru Atta, explained that the offenders were arrested from different parts of Abuja during patrol. He said the force decided to strengthen its team because since the vaccine arrived and first doses were given to health workers last week, there have been relaxation with compliance of COVID-19 protocols. National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Kola Olobodinya, in an interview with News People, showed optimism that the party taking over from the All Progressives Party in 2023. He made this known in an interview monitored by TOS TV on Tuesday. He noted that a disagreement between former Ekiti Governor Ayo Fayoshe and Oyo Governor Shei Makinde is being resolved by the Saraki-led committee. The PDP National Publicity Secretary said the party has met with strategic members for various interventions within the party. Let's take a report from the International Women's Day by our reporter, Ifi Onyekwere. In commemoration of the International Women's Day, the Ministry of Women Affairs, in collaboration with partners, organized a meeting titled National Policy Dialogue. The meeting took place at Abuja on the 8th of March 2021. The Permanent Secretary, Office of the Women Affairs, Antonia Ekwa, amongst other women represented, noted that in line with the team for the International Women's Day chose to challenge, women are chosen to challenge the effectiveness of questionable systems. The Nigerian women and the women of the world deserve a day like this. And we are proud, indeed, to be identified with the International Women's Day. It is a great day and we know that Without women, we can do nothing. Without women, the world can do nothing. Without women, there will be no men. Am I right? There will be no society because we all recognize the fact that it is women who drive change, it is women who lead the world. And of course, I didn't say because my minister will tell you that Nigerian women are leading the world. Still speaking in the meeting that involved journalists, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, recognized everyone who stand up for the cause of women. This year's team, women in leadership, achieving an equal future in a world of COVID-19, is a sounding call to celebrate our failing resilience and inspiring leadership of women and girls around the world. At the country level, our champions include the Honorable Minister of Women Affairs, who has been a tireless advocate for gender equality and has taken bold steps and indeed a bold stand in the campaign to end violence against women and girls. Internationally, we can also proudly mention our own sister, the Deputy Secretary General, Hadja Amina Mohammed and also the recently appointed the World Trade uh, Organization Director General Dr. Ngozi Akwambiela, amongst other gender advocates and champions of change. Today is also an opportunity to recognize the men and the boys who are taking a stand, raising their voices, and taking concrete steps towards gender equality, and also ensuring that a representative of UNICEF Spotlight Initiative also shared what it is like to be a woman in times as this. I feel happy, I feel proud, I feel important because uh, this is a day when women all over the world are celebrated. Um, I also feel burdened in a way because there are challenges we still have and obstacles to overcome in order to achieve gender parity and achieve gender equality in the world generally and more importantly in Nigeria. There still is a lot of work to be done. We still have less than 10% of our women represented in government and, and as well on other issues of uh, social norms and perceptions as well. 
In commemoration of the International Women's Day, I'm here at the National Dialogue Policy Meeting, um, which um, is being held by the um, Federal Ministry of Women Affairs and um, other women from strategic positions in the country. I'm talking about how women can do tangible and um, more vital things that we've been doing even in Nigeria and in um, other parts of the country. And Nigerian women we know have been doing um, strategic things to make sure that the country goes um, on right and not relenting on their efforts. Women are out here to talk about what um, other women have to do there and how we can push ourselves forward not just the women who um, are on top but those who might be less privileged or um, those who might the economic and financial crimes commission efcc on monday charged the former minister of state for power mohammed wakil he was charged in two counts of corruption at the high court of federal capital territory apo abuja Mohamed Wakil was alleged to have received 148 million naira from the funds approved for payment of outstanding insurance premium. Report has it that he received the money from Best Worth Insurance Brokers Limited through the Polaris bank account of his firm, Corozira Nigeria Limited, and pleaded not guilty when the charges were read to him on Monday. The National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, on Tuesday has re revealed that the annual merchandise trade deficit in 2020 was recorded at minus 7 billion 375 million naira. NBS disclosed that on an annual basis, total trade has a value of 32 billion 420 million naira in 2020, or 10.3 percent less than the value recorded in 2019. It added that the value of total imports in 2020 stood at 19 billion naira, 898 million, or 17.3 percent higher than in 2019. Meanwhile, the export was valued at 12 billion 522 million or 34.8 percent less than in 2019. The United Kingdom has signed a memorandum of understanding with Nigeria to return the 4.2 million pounds of stolen assets that was taken by former Delta State Governor James Ibori. This announcement was made by the British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Katrina Lang, in Abuja on Tuesday. Report has it that the signing of Memorandum of Understanding was done at the conference hall of the Ministry of Justice. Katrina Lang expressed sadness over Nigerians who were in the habit of siphoning money from the country to the UK. Afe Babalola has accused the federal government of frustrating the efforts of the Afe Babalola University in developing and producing the COVID-19 vaccine. He said this while speaking at the Abuad 8 convocation on Monday in Adu Ekiti, capital of Ekiti State. He stated that they have worked for months and put in efforts for applications to the necessary government and agencies, but are yet to get the approval. According to him, the COVID-19 has exposed the poor state of Nigeria health and education sectors, which lack infrastructure and in-depth research. Still talking COVID-19, following the arrival of the vaccine into Nigeria, some top government officials and members of the presidential task force have been on the forefront to take the vaccine. This, according to them, is to show the safety and efficacy of the vaccine. The AstraZeneca vaccine was administered to members of the PTF on Monday, the 8th of March. The members include Chairman and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Bos Mustafa, Minister of Health, Osagi Ehanire, Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, amongst others. And that is the national news on your digital First Pan African News Network. For more updates, visit www.tostvnetwork.com. Do like and follow TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS TV Network. I am Merciful Ajinomo. Thanks for watching.